do you want to give a, a few tickers, a just quick overview of you know, two or three of your favorites? Uh, you know, everyone knows where I stand. I just own the 25 calls. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll name a couple. So uh, one is um, Sandridge, which uh, we've talked a lot about. I know you may own, you definitely owned in the past and have talked about. Well, I still um, own. And they're, they're one of the biggest beneficiaries of this kind of like the lighter end of the NGL barrel um, range. And, you know, they're at what, like two times cash flow or something like that. They're sitting on a billion dollar infrastructure asset at replacement cost, which could be useful for oil <laughs> or other stuff, uh, depending on what they end up using it for. But, you know, like I think it's something like a thousand miles of pipeline or something gathering system. Um, and, uh, you know, at two times cash flow for fields that actually are pretty low decline at this point and used to be very low margin, but at higher gas like we're seeing and at higher NGLs like we're seeing, I mean, these fields are actually pretty decent margin and they're getting a lot better. And so, you know, I think something like Sandridge could end up re-rating to a higher multiple to reward the lower decline rate and the kind of more, this is going to sound weird, but like Mississippi Lime is like, unpredictably predictable like it's kind of you know what you're dealing with it's terrible but it's like also consistently terrible um <laughs> that sort of asset could get let's say five times instead of two times and you know as they hopefully repurchase shares pay a dividend whatever there's the potential for return uh for for a return that you know hits your kind of 10 15 type x uh versus uh the futures that's crazy. I mean, you had told me you thought that they could actually drill economically at these uh, this price curve. You still stand I mean, by that? Like, it's getting it's getting close to that. <laughs> I don't know. There hasn't been a, I haven't seen an economic Mississippi lime well in a very long time, and maybe there there haven't really been many uh, that have been drilled. But uh, but it's getting close to that. If if ethane prices continue on their current trajectory, and um, if service costs stay relatively low, um, yeah, I think I think there could be, especially on pads that are already built. So you're really only talking about like kind of quarter cycle type economics. Um, yeah, I could see uh, everything's already built. You're just coming in, drilling a well next to existing producers with disposal already set up and everything. Yeah, I think at four dollar gas and uh, you know with ethane uh, where where it's at and oil where it's at, you probably actually make some money drilling, which is wild. I mean, these guys are sitting on I think like 300 plus booked locations, and there's probably like a thousand or several thousand that you could actually drill on their land you know, if gas was even higher and gels were even higher. And so, um, yeah, you get like a huge amount of inventory for free and uh, you get this bet on NGLs and you have a, a balance sheet where I think they have substantial net cash. And so it seems pretty safe and uh, relatively speaking and has some of that same upside that you're looking for on the future side. Oh, well, I, I'm long also. G give us one more name. Like what else do you sure. like? Sure. So I really like Baytex. It's something I've like written up somewhere recently. They have a big oil discovery in Canada um, in the Clearwater oil formation. And so I know I just talked a lot about how there hasn't been a lot of drilling and there hasn't been a lot of exploration. Um, in Canada, there are still some small fields like with Clearwater where you can get an additional like 50 to maybe 100,000 barrels a day of oil total in aggregate across that field. So, you know, that's great for these producers, but very small in terms of the world supply and demand balance. So this sort of thing like doesn't really move the needle worldwide, but it moves the needle hugely for Baytex. Um, they're materially cheaper than many of their competitors because they had an overlevered balance sheet. Even at 50 or $55 oil, they're pretty good as they rapidly pay down their balance sheet or pay down their debt. And, uh, you know, they have this giant discovery. They have signaled publicly through their CEO going and doing this big like ceremony that their next wells on the area look good too. And they have basically embedded um, a self-funded additional 10 to 20,000 barrel a day field in their Clearwater um, which they're getting zero credit for. Um, so at like 50 or $55 oil, they're probably worth two-ish times, maybe three times what they're trading for. And if you end up right on, you know, oil being mispriced a few years out and maybe it's 100 instead of 50, similar sort of thing where this could pretty easily be a 10 or 15x. And, you know, these guys, unlike most of their competitors, they grew organically. So they actually found this field they negotiated with the uh, owners of the mineral rights, which in this case was a First uh, First Nations uh, tribe, 
and they have a great relationship with them. They're able to get the field without, uh, by committing capital spending, not uh, committing any sort of like billion dollar purchase of land or anything like that. And so, you know, I think that sort of ingenuity and that carefulness in terms of not diluting substantially in order to get additional resource, I think that ends up getting them a premium multiple as that field ramps up. So cheap stock, decent amount of financial leverage too, which Sandridge doesn't have, but they also don't have the same sort of torque in terms of like an ethane or other sort of recovery. So as oil goes up, to the extent that you're right, this thing could end up as a 10 bagger or more. To the extent that you're wrong, I'm wrong on oil, it could still end up being a two or three times return as they go and develop this asset, um, even in a lower oil price environment. 